My name is Jason Flack. I'm from Johnson City, Tennessee, a local artist. And I'm here at the McKinney Center in Jonesboro. And you can find it, uh, my exhibit, uh, right now uh, until the 19th and also come see me on the 19th for the reception. In this room, it shows my growth as a creator, but also the variety of subject matter. Some things are staples of the color sometimes or often, boom, you know, and then also so the, the surrounding black lines, dramatic, but also bold. And to be a contemporary artist here, an art style uh, that, that has been for a long time dismissed because it's either cartoony or misunderstood or both. It's not, it's not considered fine art. And fine artists, I just had a conversation with fine artists and, and they look at art like, I wish I could do that. And then meanwhile, contemporary artists are going, I wish I could do that. But it's a, it's a uh, meet in the middle. Behind me are paintings that depict not only the, the slave galley, uh, slave ship, there, there literally is taken from the book um, to be a slave. Depictions of horrible things done to slaves during the, the transatlantic slave trade and brought into picture color, right? They're not just a diagram buried on Google images. They are here, they are very detailed. You can study them, They're, even some of the paintings I have, including the one behind me, has commentary from the actual book, front and back. I, I, if I remember, I did maybe write something on the back of the canvas, but that's what I wanted to do. And I'm gonna show it, and, and, and now that you can't say you didn't see it. I'm not saying to exploit or, or even go like, looky here, right? It's not a joking matter, but it's education and entertainment. The subjects that are behind me, especially on my right and left and, and behind me, they're absolutely inspired unfortunate, by unfortunate events, but also me watching stuff on the news going, it's my, that's a sign for me to record history, whether past or current, and just put it out there. Uh, another example is the Columbus one. Like, that's, that's absolutely watching us realize like, yeah, that guy who did some horrible stuff, they're taking down statues of it. People can have their opinion about that. I just paint it. And, and when I paint something like that to talk about the, prog uh, the process of, of making the more, I guess the art that requires some thought, I dive down into it very deeply. Something fun and something that's just uh, considered an exercise or uh, a have to. It's, uh, I liken it to breathing or bleeding or walking and talking. It's, I have to do something artistic every day, at least start something. Then of course, if I start something, then I have to see it probably through or give myself very exhausting to be around is what I'm saying. I, I, I have, but, this, but that's how serious, I, when, when people talk to me, they, they understand, they go, oh, okay, you, you're, you think like that. Well, that's on purpose too, it's taking work. And again, that comes from confidence, but diving down into art that somebody might say uh, explicit or obscene, or that takes me into a dark spot where, because I feel like you, I owe it to that subject to get a little, to have a little feeling on my own. Otherwise, I don't think it will come out. It's done up here, but I gotta do it here. Like the Black Nanny won Appalachian Show Award in last year's uh, Kingsport Art Guild. That's loosely based, it's obviously based on the black nannies that they say ended in the 40s and 50s, right? And people should look up those stories, or not, not for pity, but for to see what I'm talking about. Because what's really, really fascinating if, if cause I grew up in the quintessential mixed family. I was raised predominantly by my black family. So I got the stuff that everybody's now researching and finding out, those were, those were conversations over cornflakes. You know what I mean? Like my mom, my mom, God rest her soul, she died last year, told me about her early jobs. And one of her early jobs, of course, uh, moving to Kingsport, uh, then later on here, was, was taking care of a, a white doctor's family. Okay, and she, she said she didn't mind that job at all. It paid well, the people took care of her, she took care of these kids, right? She, she co-signed that, that painting. And I got, that was actually the last thing I got to tell her, uh, was that, Mimal, your, uh, your painting won, won an award, and, and Mimal, as, 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 uh, as quick and, and fire and brimstone as she was, she went, that's nice. And, and, in, and in Mimal language, that's like, yes! She told me about this family she took care of um, and the man would disappear for a long time. She'd raise these kids and they would mistake and they'd go, you know, her name was uh, Carolyn Elizabeth Brady. And they would, 
instead of saying uh, Miss Carolyn, they'd go Mom, <clears throat> uh, Miss Carolyn, because she's around him so long. And then of course, I can't say the word here, but of course they got older and they called her a different name. So I'm like, that's what I'll paint. I'll paint a tired woman who's got a grip on this baby that you couldn't pry her hands from. The, baby's, the baby is asleep in comfort, wearing a nice dress. But the eyes of this woman is not only in protective mode, but she's like, I'm tired mode. I don't even see my kids. But I'm, I'm glad to be able to get all this stuff out that's been in my head being a quiet kid and having everybody's talking about like identity issues. Yeah, I've had that early before. Nobody was and nobody cared. Nobody even wanted to hear about that and talk about, you know, um, am I black or am I white? And the kids were seen, not heard. <laughs> that's all I can say back then, <laughs> you know, personally, maybe even slash selfishly that because because I, I, my sister laid her head on a pillow May 7, 2010. I never got to say anything to her. She was just gone. You got to accept it. I was homeless. I had all this stuff going on and I, I know I'm very aware of my age group that you can fall into drugs. You can fall into any all kinds of traps. That's that's with relationships. That's with not having relationships, job, whatever. But luckily, a, a friend of mine's mother, a friend that I watched get sentenced to prison. That's where my all these bright colors is the reverb from trauma. Paint this bright and also being ignored. I don't feel like anybody owes me anything, but you will see me. That's how strong I feel about it. But how I started, my mother and father always say they're, they're separated, but they do agree with this, that I started probably, probably drawing at age four. And they said when I was drawing at age four, I was probably drawing like an eight year old. Just like anything, life happens. And you know, I, I actually was an athlete for a long time. And, uh, and I just kind of buried that, put, put art in just, you know, college years or whatnot. College chewed me up, spit me out. And then, and then my sister passes. And like I was getting into, I had a friend I, I considered like a brother. I never was involved in any of the stuff that, that some of my friends were involved with and even, even family, uh, but I, I knew they were doing it, but they always kept me out of it. Let's just say he got, he got nabbed. Uh, there was a big uh, bus that was all the way from like Florida to Georgia to the Carolinas and here. And he called me one day and said, Jay, I'm, I've got a, me and you can't talk no more. It was like a breakup. It was like, you know, or like a friend moves away. Well, it's time for his court. He wanted me there. His, his mom wanted me there. And keep in mind, my sister just passed. I have this breakup, this goofy breakup. I'm, don't tell my family, but I'm living in, out of my car. Drive up there. I remember it was a blazing hot day. And there's something about watching my friend. He's a big guy. He's like a big version of me. We had, we had long uh, dreadlocks back then. Seeing him shaved, he's gaunt, he's like yellow color. He's got these shackles he can barely move. And that's another death. Watching him get shackled up and get sentenced, you just, you, you just can't believe like, wow, like that was really surreal. But out of that, um, long story less long, his mother just kind of nonchalantly gave me this old box paint set. For about a year, that paint set probably held up a DVD player for, you know what I mean? It probably, it didn't do anything, but you know, I started painting with this old crusty paint set. I got some old cheap brushes from Michael's, I guess. And I made this like voluptuous, all I knew was just this goofy stuff from comics, but I drew this like voluptuous Phoenix lady. She was fighting these uh, elements, rock and wind and water and whatnot. And she was made out of fire. And my friends were like, that's cool. You know, and I thought that's enough for me to like, that's cool. And then after that, it was, I didn't really have a plan, but I was like, draw, paint what you know. And I started painting stuff about music. When I knew I had something was, uh, and it was a friend of mine, so you have to be careful when friends buy art, but I, I you know, I was glad he did, but it was, uh, it was like the silhouette of this head listening to, uh, had headphones and it was like, the cord was wrapped around a certain way and then it was plugged into a heart. And, it, and I thought it was clever. <laughs> now you can probably find all that stuff on Etsy now, but, uh, but I thought it was clever. And, and, and not only did I think it was clever, but I thought it was, it was really cool. And it was such a flattering experience to have somebody buy work. And it wasn't a, like an aha moment, but for me then it was like, somebody will purchase my work. That's, that's what a compliment that is. What an achievement, how, no matter how small. And then after that, it was like, word of mouth and 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 then you become like i said the the word's going to come up a lot value and confidence um, synonymous with each other 
uh, and then all of a sudden uh, you become more daring because you you feel like you can your back can be straightened now and your chin's out and the that's the kind of the early beginnings of how I became a painter. I desperately needed something to stick with me and for me to stick with. I had nothing. That's why I'm like tooth and nail with this stuff. I don't take it too serious because that can get rigid. I live and I paint like, like you won't see me tomorrow. And that's, a, that's true. If this stuff, I'll have my 15 minutes of fame, hopefully it's 15 years or whatever, but I'll consider it 15, it'll go by like this. Life is but a dream, right? And that's, I want to feel like somebody. I didn't, I know what it's like to not. And I've not been as, as low as many, but I've been low and, and why not? But that's, that's what separates me is, is it's, I treat it like it's do or die. But I also know too, on the same coin, different side, I also know like I'll just disappear and I'll still be an artist. There, there's no doubt, there's almost direct line from my style and inspirations uh, from comic books and graphic, you know, graphic novels. Um, all the uh, studying of, of blues and reds and yellows, uh, greens, but there's, there's also another, if there's a fork in the road, it goes right to Keith Haring. He, I remember vi little vignettes on Nickelodeon. That's how far I remember it. And I don't, I don't know if you can look these up, but I'm sure they exist on YouTube now. But I remember him, his little characters dancing in this little thing, this little vignette before a show. Like not, not a commercial selling you a super soaker, but a little thing of art. And I remember his little characters and I used to call them uh, like crosswalk men and women. But what, what I liked about it was how simple his work was, but you can, you can say it meant anything to you but also the colors. There's absolutely a direct line from, uh, from, from me, comics, uh, and back to Keith, probably uh, Jenny Tarkovsky, the creator of um, uh, like Powerpuff Girls. I love the animation, even though I was like a little older then, uh, you can see those bold black lines of bright colors, right? And there's other, there's other um, creators, there's even, even though my style doesn't look like it, there's an uh, artist, Julie Bell, he used to draw uh, old like um, mythology and, and, and comic stuff, but her art was, it wasn't, <laughs> my art does not look like hers at all. She's probably would be considered a grandmaster, her, it, it, incredible. But I'm just saying I was so into knowing those names of artists back then to try to take a little bit, maybe how she did hair or how Keith did sim simple figures, but the, but the colors, and even, even Jean-Michel Basquiat making messes out of something, uh, showing chaos, but little order, this little order, patch of order here, but just, what is that? A lot of, a lot of what is, so I, I am, just like in my, in my blood, uh, in my head there's an amalgamation of this chemistry set of things I've been influenced, in, and a lot of it is, is from, uh, from the stuff I digested when I was younger, for sure. Uh, really, I, I started out doing, um, I call it mid-size, and I, you, you learn as you go, so when you see me do bigger things, it's really because I'm like, I want my art to be seen, and I want it to be big, and I'm looking at, because you gotta remember, I'm, I'm, you know, not to say, like, it sounds like real hip hoppy to say it, but I'm from the ground, I'm from the street, so when I go to ETSU, and I'm in those learned artists, I don't want to have just this little thing. I want to be able to show, like, I can go with you too, I don't, like, I, not compete, but maybe compete, but, like, I could be right up there with you guys. But the, as things got bigger, as far as the size of, of, of the canvases or, or the boards or whatever I use, uh, specifically to get, it was to get attention, expand on my style, and really just because I want to be able to have, have my sort of playful style, but you to kind of, even, even something that's so big, I still want you to squint and, and see detail too. Like the one behind me here, I actually did this one in, in the in the crucifixion um, of of the Son of God. Those were specifically for here. So I thought, well, it's it's got to be big. <laughs>